Hey friends, how's it going? It is chapter book story time, so go ahead and get comfy cozy and uh, get ready to listen to the story because we are at a very interesting part of the book. So if you recall, in the last chapter, um, well, two chapters ago, Layla had gone on stage and done her performance, her escape artist performance to open the show. And then, uh, and then the misfits all got to sit down in the audience, and Sandra took the stage. Sandra Santos, uh, her stage name is Madame Esmeralda, and so she took the stage to do her psychic show. And she had called a group of volunteers up on stage from the audience, and um, and she was kind of like she, well, she, what she said she was doing was she like was talking to the spirits in the room of their loved ones and things like that. Um, but then she gets to the last two noodles. <laughs> so she gets to the last two and, um, it's this couple and Layla had recognized them and she, but she couldn't quite tell from where she felt like it was from something a long time ago. So we need to look back on Layla's history. So what you remember is, um, she was left at an orphanage as a baby to be raised by, um, to be raised by some nice uh, the way we described them in the last book, this was a long time ago, way at the beginning of the first book of the Magic Misfits series, we talked about what it meant that Layla uh, had been adopted, how she had grown up initially in an orphanage um, that was kind of, it's kind of like a school. There are, are teachers there, but the teachers do more than just teach. They take care of these kids, and the kids live there. Um, kind of like the character in BFG, Oh, what was her name? Sophie? Who uh, the BFG picked her up from an orphanage where she was living with a group of other girls and being taken care of by these kind of like teacher mother figures um, who cared for them. Um, but so then Layla was adopted and taken into the Vernon family. So she's got Mr. Dante Vernon and the other Mr. Vernon who are her dads and now she lives with them and you know they're her dads they're her family and she loves them they love her um and they take care of her and uh but what's ha happening now in the book is sandra has now made this claim she says on stage in front of everyone she is saying that layla is the child of this couple on stage whoever these people are Sandra's now saying that these are her original parents. Like this is the, the mom that held her in her belly. Um, and the, the couple that would have given her to the orphanage, um, because as they said, the couple on stage were saying how they were just in a position where they, they couldn't have taken care of, of Layla. They couldn't have taken care of this baby and kept it healthy and happy. And so they did the best thing they could for it, which was to give it to an orphanage that could keep her healthy and happy and where she could eventually be adopted by a family that could keep her healthy and happy, which is what happened. Um, but now they're here and they want to meet Layla and it's just, it's a lot, right? Um, I, I mean, it, it would be, it'd be, I think, odd for Layla to suddenly be presented with these people who say they're related to her, that they're her family. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how Layla reacts to it. But I did want to point out one more thing before we proceed, which was right before Sandra revealed that this couple um, are related to Layla, she had kind of like this uh, moment of distress. Um, which was odd. She kind of, she threw her hat off and you could hear her talking to seemingly no one saying, no, no, I won't do it. I can't do it. Uh, just like the moment when the misfits had seen Sandra in the, um, uh, the lobby of the hotel, also seemingly talking to no one in this distressed state saying she wouldn't do it. Who is she talking to? What's going on? I don't know. We'll find out. In chapter 22, um, we're going to keep reading here and see what unfolds. How Layla reacts to this couple who are claiming to be related to her. What's going on with Sandra, who's this mystery person she's talking to. 
lots of things. So, shall we? Chapter 22. Layla couldn't do it alone. Carter and Theo had to help her up the steps at the side of the stage as the audience clapped awkwardly. They seemed as confused as she was. Layla noticed her papa pushing through the crowd heading toward the stage. He wore a look of shock and hurt that Layla had never seen on him before. She knew that there was no meal he could cook up that would soothe his soul tonight. Audience, it's been a pleasure to share my gifts with you this evening, Sandra said to the crowd. But for now, we must offer privacy to this reunited family. May all of you take care. With that, the heavy velvet curtain landed at the front of the stage with a resounding whoomp blocking the audience's view. The scattered applause died out and was replaced by the white noise of loud conversation, a thousand voices talking at once. Layla was struck suddenly with the thought that this news would fly around town quicker than she could pick a lock. The couple stood next to Sandra, who was holding out her arms to Layla. Leaving Carter and Theo behind, Layla fell into the embrace. Sandra squeezed her tightly. It's a miracle, Sandra said quietly. Your parents, your real parents, have finally found you. Layla couldn't answer. She knew who her parents were. Neither of them was on this stage. She didn't have to be a psychic to comprehend that. Carter and Theo stood back near the stairs, giving the group some space, but Layla wished they'd come closer. A nameless fear was making her feel woozy. So Layla says um, she knew who her parents were and neither of them were on this stage. Who's she talking about? Who are her, who are her parents to her? Do you know? She's talking about the Vernons, right? The other Mr. Vernon and Mr. Dante Vernon. With the curtain closed, they had at least a little privacy. The stagehands stood in the wings, pretending not to listen. Sandra made instructions. The Varalikas stared at Layla as if she were a unicorn. The Varalikas being this couple who are claiming to be related to Layla. Their eyes were wide and watery, their mouths slack with astonishment. Layla found it nearly impossible to look at them. Long ago, she'd promised herself to stop wondering where she'd come from. It was a shock to have the question whoosh back into her brain. The adults were talking to her, asking her things, but she couldn't hear any of it. The only noise backstage was her heartbeat pounding at her eardrums. She didn't know what to think or what to do. She felt as though a closet door were closing on her, as though shoelaces were biting into her skin as the, others, as the girls at Mother Margaret's home tied her wrists before leaving her alone to figure out how to undo the knots. Instinct told her to run away, to leave everyone behind and protect herself. Layla had long ago learned to escape, but it was not often she wished to vanish as well. Suddenly a reassuring voice called out from behind her. Layla! Her papa was galumphing across the stage, his heavy footsteps shaking the floor. Then his warm arms were around her as he hugged her close. After he stepped in front of her, as if to protect her from the strangers, from the strangers. Who are you people? He asked. I'm a professor, Mrs. Varalika answered. I'm a banker, said Mr. Varalika. They turned back to Layla. And this is, we hope it is, our daughter. May we ask, is your birthday on February 12th? You don't have to answer them, Layla, Papa said, turning to her. He looked her in the eyes. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. Tell me what you want and I'll support you. He squeezed her hand reassuringly. Finally, after a long time, she nodded to the couple. Yes, that's my birthday. At least according to the note pinned to the basket that Mother Margaret found me in. The couple's eyes grew glassy and wet. Tell me, said Mrs. Varlika, do you still have the pair of freckles that look like owl, owl eyes on the back of your ankle? Layla's skin prickled. She lifted the cuff of her pants to show the woman that she was right. It is her, 
Mrs. Varalika whispered to her husband. Our daughter, I can't believe this. Neither can I, Papa growled. He stared daggers at Sandra and the couple. I'm not trying to be rude, but you must understand. This is a lot to take in. This is my daughter and... Sandra stared at the floor. The Varalika's expressions were of worry and confusion. Mr. Varalika whispered, We understand. This is an impossible situation, but we'd love to just sit and talk with Layla for a while. Would that be all right? I, I honestly don't know, the other Mr. Vernon said. He looked at Layla, who hadn't shed a tear, but was filled to brimming on the inside. She felt as if she might burst. Papa could see her turmoil, and he answered the Varalikas. Perhaps another time. Right now, I need to get my daughter home, if you'll excuse us. Papa took her hand and led her back to the stairs at the side of the stage. She turned to, the, she turned to glance at the couple one last time. The woman raised a mournful hand as if to say goodbye, and a phantom pain bloomed in Layla's chest, right underneath the key. The misfits followed their friend and her father down the hall. Oh, excuse me, Kitty. The misfits followed their friend and her father down the hall and into his work kitchen. Then Layla's papa phoned her other dad to explain what had happened. Papa's voice hitched, and he put his hand over the receiver, covering his mouth at the same time to mask the conversation. The two Mr. Vernon spoke on the phone while the kids sat around one of the island counters in the center of the resort kitchen. Layla, Ridley started, hugging her friend. What was that all about? Was it part of the act? Layla was too stunned to respond. Of course it was, said Izzy. Every act needs a little drama, Ollie added, or in this case, a lot. Izzy punched her brother in the arm. Let's practice the quiet game, Mr. Insensitive. Carter took hold of Layla's limp hand while Theo squeezed her shoulder as if either of those actions might shock her into something, into responding. Ridley rubbed Layla's arm. You're gonna be all, you're gonna be okay. But that's the question, Layla said with a groan. Am I? The others looked at her as if she'd just said a swear but she was too upset and confused to apologize. Carter and Theo winced. Even Ollie and Izzy, who almost always wore smiles, looked worried. We're here for you, said Ridley. Layla blinked. I just hope I can still be here with you. Of course, said Theo. Where else would you be? With them? Layla nodded in the direction of the auditorium, as if that was where the Varalikas lived now. But they can't do that, said Carter. The Vernons adopted you. We're your family. I know. But do the Varalikas know that? Does Sandra? asked Ridley. Of course she does, said Layla. She's one of my dad's oldest friends. I'm sure that what happened on the stage hurt her as much as it did the rest of us. It was almost as if she didn't want to share the revelation, but she knew she had to tell the truth. Ridley stared at her for a moment. I'm sure you're right. But Ridley didn't look at all sure about any of it. All right, so um, Layla is kind of scared right now, which I mean, I think I can understand. She's afraid of basically, you know, losing her family, which is the the Vernons and her misfit friends, right? Um, she says, am I even going to be here to be with you? Are they going to take me away? Like, what's going to happen? She's scared. But are the Mr. Dante Vernon and the other Mr. Vernon and her whole crew of misfit friends, are they going to let anything bad happen to her? No way, right? They're there for her. Just like Ridley said, they're there for her. You really just like to be right in front of my face, don't you, Noodles? <laughs> they're there for her, and they're going to love her and take care of her and keep her safe. And whether that safety involves this other family, the Varalikas, or not, is we'll see. We'll see with time. But, um, but no matter what happens, they're going to continue to love her and support her and to keep her safe. 
But Ridley uh, is suspicious. And I don't blame her for being suspicious. She Because she says, you know, like, why would Sandra have done that? Knowing, knowing that, uh, you know, Layla had, is adopted. She has a family, um, you know, why would she have done that? Especially in that way on stage in front of an audience. Ridley is suspicious. She's just like, you know, she's like, oh yeah, I'm sure you're right. But she's suspicious of Sandra. I've, I've been suspicious of Sandra this whole book. What do you think? I don't know. But we still have a bit of chapter left to go, so let's keep going. Layla returned with Carter and her papa to the apartment above the magic shop. <clears throat> her dad greeted her with the tightest hug he'd ever given her. Oh, sweetheart. Layla felt her frame shaking. For a moment, she wasn't sure which of them was crying before she realized they both were. She let it out. All the fear, all the anger, it poured down her cheeks and soaked his jacket. Layla allowed herself to settle into the rhythm of his breathing, and soon they landed together after her dizzying flight of worry. Finally, he asked, are you okay? Her instinct was to smile and brush away the tears, but she didn't wish to lie to him. I'm happy to be home, she answered. The phone rang. No one moved. None of them wanted the interruption, but when it went on and on, the jangling, the clanging noise began to sound like an alarm. Mr. Vernon answered it. What is it? He asked. Almost immediately, his face turned bright red. Oh, they have, have they? Tomorrow morning? No, that's not going to be good for us. Fine. If it must be done, I suppose we don't have a choice. We'll be there. What's wrong? asked the other Mr. Vernon. Who was that? Mr. Vernon glanced at Layla and Carter with a look of doubt, as if he thought that maybe they shouldn't hear what he had to say. But then he just let it all out. That couple, the Varalikas, booked a room at the resort and contacted a local lawyer. That was him. He's demanding we meet with them, all of us, including Layla and Carter, tomorrow morning at his office. Why? Layla asked. Are they going to try to take me away from you? Her fathers couldn't hide the worried look that passed between them. Of course not, said Mr. Vernon. They only want to talk to us, that's all. <sighs> this is getting complicated. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's the same fear that we just talked about. Layla's afraid that um, they're going to try to take her away from her family, the Vernons and the Misfits. Um, and, you know, I'm worried for her, but I trust in her family to take care of her. Um, I don't know. Let's keep going. In the dead of night, Layla was lying in bed, staring at the ceiling like she'd done earlier that week. She was trying not to cry. She clasped her special key in her fist so tightly that she wondered if it might unlock something inside her, a secret she'd secured for forgotten reasons. It felt like the night of the circus monkey's arrival had been a hundred years ago. Was the little creature still out there? Maybe it was watching her right now, she thought. On this night, Layla was not visited by the ghosts of things past. No Mother Margaret's home for children, no dark closets. No shoes tied together by naughty housemates. Now Layla worried about the phantom presence of an uncertain future. A future in which she might have to leave this place and the people she loved, all to follow a pair of strangers along a mist and shrouded and possibly perilous trail. There came a knocking at the wall, taps and scratching that created a peculiar but meaningful pattern. Carter was awake, sending her a message, Morse code, dot 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 dash dot dot dash dot dot dash dot dash 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 she worked out the letters from the dots and dashes thankful for the distraction when she figured it out she smiled she thought for a while then knocked her knuckles and dragged her fingertips against the wallpaper in reply dash dash dot dash 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 dot dash dot uh and that is the end 
of our chapter. So we don't know what they said in Morse code, um, but it was something that was making Layla feel better, right? Um, because she smiled. Whatever he said made her smile. And so Carter w is supporting her. Um, this is kind of a scary situation and a suspicious situation. I'm still with Ridley on that. But uh, it's a scary situation. And, um, you know, it, part of me is questioning if the Ver who are the Verilikas? I mean, we know that that Layla was adopted, so she does have someone out there that's related to her. Um, is it the Verilikas? Or is this some trick? I don't know. But, you know, the family that Layla knows now, the family that she knows and loves now, are the Vernons and her misfit friends. And they're so important to her. So no matter what happens, you know, even if she did find long lost relatives, she doesn't want to lose the Vernons and the misfits. Um, and so that's what she's scared of is, is having to choose, right? Or not even getting to choose and just being dragged in one direction or the other. She, you know, she doesn't want to, no matter what happens, whether she meets this other part of her family or not, she doesn't want to lose the part that she has now which are the Vernons and the Misfits. And you know what? I know that the Vernons and the Misfits aren't going to let her lose them because they love her just as much as she loves them. Um, as of right now, you know, it's still a little scary and a little mysterious, but, um, but I know how much they love her and care about her, and, and they don't want to lose her any more than she wants to lose them. So I know that they're going to make this work and stick together no matter what happens whether these Veralikas are really her relatives or not because I'm still suspicious because Sandra was acting weird so I don't know I want to know but we'll have to continue reading chapter 23 next time all right I will see you then say bye noodles bye everybody <laughs>